you own an i3 printer or um, any other kind of smaller rep wrap uh, 200 by 200 um, print table size then I'm sure you like me you came across a few problems with them and uh, not only that the print size is very limiting you end up having to chop up your um, your work to be able to print it in a number of small places so um, there are a few issues as well I had I basically bought a Prusa i3 it was quite a good little printer um, but it was it lacked rigidity when you're printing high objects or tall objects and uh, there are a few other issues I had with it as well but the most important one was the lack of um, I think rigidity and um, the lack of any decent or scalable print volume so um, I designed basically designed uh, decided to design my own and here it is um, it's a large scalable printer there it is and you can basically make it any size you like I suppose there's a, there's a sort of practical limit maybe of um 500 by 500 by 500 something like this at the moment the one you're looking at here is uh 400 by 400 by 35 high which is a pretty big print volume um volume down here you've got <clears throat> two print heads um a one mil and a half mil in blue to quickly show you around the side of it I've also addressed the other issues with the extruder being mounted on top and changed it to twin bowdens. You can see over there, there's just the frame. It's nice and rigid, made out of very cheap, very simple parts. We've got some 10mm studded bars down here, um, some 19mm aluminium box tubing, which I think was about £20, so it was about $25 or something. All the other parts you see in white were printed on my i3. We've got a few other changes as well. So other than the twin Bowdens, we've got um, the uh, we've got an opto switch, the limit switches over there. And we've got a manual one, of course, over this side just to see how they perform. Um, I've on my i3, I kept having problems with one of these thermal fuses keep tripping out. So I've stuck in an external relay switch down here or a MOSFET switch and then taking the power for the uh, heated table it's from different leads on the power supply. Ideally you have two power supplies really. And down here of course we've got um, a watt meter or power meter just out of interest as much as anything I was curious to how much power things consume. It doesn't actually take that much, maybe three or four hundred watts or something. Have a quick look under there. You can see that we've got about a 250 mil heated bed and there's a one mil aluminium plate on top of it underneath the glass just to dissipate the heat you can see the whole bed is spring mounted and adjustable and like i said you can make this any size you like really all you need to do is print off those parts and i've done them all for you you can download them for the website but i'll tell you about that in a minute now partly the reason um i needed this big printer was obviously to print big things but um it was just so fiddly having to chop up your work into small pieces and then glue it back together um, and I'll show you a couple of things I printed with it so here's something I made earlier <clears throat> and down here I printed these um, feet and battery boxes down there and they are about 30 centimeters by 15 and about 15 high and I printed these blue leg struts there as well which are quite large they're about so it's 35 centimeters, something like that. Um, and I would have printed the legs if I'd had it at the time, but now with that printer, I'll be able to print the whole lot in one hit. So you'll recognize the software, of course, as uh, Marlin, this one. You can download that as well. I've hacked around the Marlin version to, to suit this printer. Um, just the position of all of the limit switches, uh, the twin extruders, all that kind of thing. So that you can basically download that from the website. It's pretty easy. And then it's literally just some, print off all these white pieces, some more of them. And some self-tapping screws to screw it to the frame. And then once you've printed all the white pieces, you can literally just strip down your i3 um, and move all of the parts onto this once you've got your frame. And that's it really, it's, that, it's literally that easy. So you can do it two ways. You can either buy a new tackle like I did actually. Um, whilst I was designing this, in case I had to go back and print off some changes, you can imagine it took quite a lot of time to design all these individual pieces. So um, 
I ended up buying double of everything and then I've sold off the old printer now but um, you don't have to do that of course you can just print out the white pieces assemble the frame move over all your old stuff and that means you then only really got to buy the two um, Bowden extruders um, the two print heads there which is cheap as ever and um, they've got one extra um, stepper motor I think or two there's a whole list on the website anyway so just while that's heating up I've just um, set it to print something simple um, you'll be able to see here I pass in the old heated bed plate as a 200 by 200 you can see the size difference of this thing and uh, as a comparable one here's a coffee cup appropriately marked and again you can see how big that is if you look back now at the 200 by 200 um, and you can see how scalable this thing is so you can actually print some pretty large stuff and that's why I've put in the one mil head of course um, because I can always apply a bit of filler or something over whatever it is I'm making uh, you can pretty much basically print something comfortably about the size of a crash helmet with, with this device so in terms of costs for this thing you're really looking at about 100 to 150 dollars something like that and perhaps 100 pounds not a significant amount of money particularly if you were to compare it to a comparable size printer that you perhaps have to pay maybe a thousand fifteen hundred dollars something like that for um and you can actually just make this one yourself it's actually a pretty good printer So here we are nearly finished and you can see it prints quite well, it fuses really well actually, you can see it's very smooth, although you can see some lines, they're very tightly bonded and thick. It's also quite quick, so what we're making here is actually a spool wheel for these um, spoolers, it's got a slight taper on it, let's take those in there, let's make it a bit of focus. So if you're interested in making one of these and upscaling your i3 or any other rep wrap for that matter or you just fancy making a giant sized printer um, feel free to go to the website uh, read the description above if you can there we go it's been better in focus and send me a message